much. Joining us now is ton, uh, townhall.com political editor and Fox News contributor Guy Benson. Guy, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. A lot of problems with this story. We never celebrate the loss of life in this country. Um, but having said that, here in New York, we've got a serious problem with mental illness, homelessness on the street, crime, you name it. I've been living here. I've experienced every piece of it. So you have a situation here where people are forced to fend for themselves on the street to try to protect each other when they suspect that um, there's activity going on that's dangerous when they're fearful. Uh, the Marine puts this guy in a chokehold. He subdues him. He isn't trained to know what deadly use of force is. Um, and, and that's the problem in a situation like this when police aren't doing that, right? Because they've been trained to be able to know the difference, when to stop, what to do um, in a situation like this. So I've got a, a problem as I, I sort of see what's happening here in New York with respect to um, this Marine, because I'm thinking to myself, it's a free-for-all here. It's been like the Wild West. People don't know how to handle mm -hmm. it. They see someone threatening on the subway, and they put them in a chokehold because they're trying to protect others, but they don't know how far is too far. Mm -hmm. And this is what Alvin Bragg wants to do. He wants to lock him up and put him in jail. How many times have you been on the subway in this city where someone comes through and it is very uncomfortable in the car, mm -hmm. it's a volatile situation, right. you don't even want to make eye contact mm -hmm. because you don't know what might escalate something? I don't live in this city. I come up here maybe once a month to do my job, and occasionally maybe I'll go up to the Bronx for a Yankee game, come back. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that multiple times. You see videos all over social media of really scary things happening on the subway mm -hmm. where clearly, particularly women, are in mm -hmm. danger, like imminent danger, yeah. and no one's doing anything about it. So here's someone who did something about it. Mm -hmm. And I think most people on a subway car like that in this city were grateful and glad that right. he intervened. That being said, a man is dead, right? right? That, that's not something to just sort of glide past. Uh, I've spoken to some people saying that he should have released the chokehold sooner after the man was unconscious. That's something for a jury to decide. But I think for the family of the deceased to talk about this being murder, and we've heard that from some politicians as well, right. the whitewashing of this man's record, which is absolutely relevant, punching old women in the face, yeah. screaming in the moment, threatening people, I don't care if I die or go to jail. That is a scary moment. And to have basically a good Samaritan step forward to try to stop harm to someone else. Did he take it too far? That's an interesting legal question. But I think it could be very hard to convict this person of anything, let alone murder, right. given the circumstances. I think our question, and maybe to Jackie's point, when the police aren't enabled to do their job, you get these citizen vigilantes mm -hmm. who take it into their own hands because we aren't getting help. How then, when you look at Alvin Bragg, is he deciding what crimes he is or is not going to prosecute? Because that's been a big debate in the city of we don't prosecute crimes anymore. Yep, politics. So I'm not actually old enough to remember Bernie Getz, mm. but I've read about Bernie Getz. When crime was really bad in this city decades ago, that was a vigilante justice moment where I, pretty clearly I think there was a crime committed there, but a jury refused to convict because the officials weren't doing their jobs. And so Bernie Getz took the law into his own hands, mm -hmm. and a lot of New Yorkers said, good for him, or they at least whispered it. This is a little bit different. The answer to your question, very simply, is politics. Uh, when the name is Donald Trump, let's upgrade the charge. Mm. When the homeless right. man defecates on a pride flag, let's hit him with a hate crime charge. That just happened mm -hmm. here in the city. Here, here's manslaughter too. When all this other stuff is catch, release, charges drop, downgrade, right. obviously there's politics at play. It's impossible not to recognize that. And I think that's part of, of the problem here, why so many people might be instinctively rushing to the defense of this Marine, regardless of the facts, they don't trust Alvin Bragg to actually seek justice right. in a meaningful way. And a $100,000 bail was set. So, <laughs> right, so exactly. other people walk out with no bail. No, you know, no because bail. Because bail is oppressive. Right. So we're talking about issues that are going to move voters in 2024. I want to talk about this. Anderson Cooper addressing Donald Trump's appearance on CNN's town hall. Cooper attacking the former president, and he demonized, or that's what it sounded like, Republican audience members. Listen to this. It was certainly disturbing to hear that audience, young and old, our fellow citizens, people who love their kids and go to church, laugh and applaud his lies. That man you were so upset to hear from last night, he may be president of the United States in less than two years. And that audience that upset you, 
That's a sampling of about half the country. They are your family members, your neighbors, and they are voting. A lot of condescension dripping from that little lecture by Anderson Cooper. But what did you make of his response to that town hall with Donald Trump? I mean, it was interesting. He wouldn't even say Trump's name in the no. clip. That man. We can be adults and talk about who the person is. It's the former president who wants to be president again, Donald Trump. People who know me and know my commentary know that I'm not a huge Trump guy. I thought that he had some good moments and some less good moments on that CNN town hall. I'm fascinated by CNN tearing itself apart over this program. Right. They finally had a good rating <laughs> for the first time in forever, it feels like, uh, like an average night for the five, but for them, an amazing rating. And they are self like flagellating, there's just internal combustion happening, they're shooting at each other in the press, they're going after their own network on right. the air. It's a sight to see. Well, and they, they could have just said, good for us. We're telling the whole story. We're giving both sides. There's such an easy, right. obvious response to that. And instead, he goes through this just elaborate sort of apology, sort of virtue signal about why they did it and shouldn't have. And it seems so confused and also like they're never going to get this right leading up to this 2024 election if they can't even get that one. I mean, what's the standard here? You've got a leading presidential candidate. You can't interview him right. because yeah, exactly. of... You can't listen Look, to both sides. Right. And, and you can't if, have a conversation anymore. If he's lying about certain things, which he does sometimes, it's fine to push back. They had like the... 68-person panel after the show for two hours, <laughs> fact-checking on, big panel. on a everything, big panel. right? They, they did their thing. I just wanted, like, is all this anger and sort of bullying of CNN leadership, is that designed to make sure that those types of forms right. don't happen mm. again yeah. with Donald Trump? I just don't really understand how that works. Like, whether you like him or not, whether you think he'd be terrible for the country again or not, he's in the top position in the polls yeah. for a nomination of a major party for presidency of the United States. Yeah. That is a reality. That is when a reality. I heard that Chris Licht was doing this, I said he's he's smart. He's trying to take yeah. the network in a different direction. He's trying to hear both sides. This is a smart business and programming decision. Yeah. Well, and his talent trounced him for it. I wonder how much leadership over there is saying, like, go ahead and say whatever you have to say. We made our decision. Yeah. You say what you need to say. Or if this is like a little mini tantrum that is not sanctioned. Mm -hmm. I don't know. More than a mini we'll tantrum, say. Guy. Thank we you very see. much. We yeah. appreciate it.